Welcome back to 30 Days to Building a Marriage You Love. I'm Danielle. And I'm Chris. And we're at tip 22, which is exciting, hard to believe. I hope you have found these last 21 days uh, encouraging. Um, We hope it's stirred some good dialogue. And today we're excited to dive into the topic of (laughs) men and women. And the women. Why, women. Why are you Simple. laughing? Because yeah, I don't know. You, you just give me this look like, hey, what are we talking about? I know what we're talking well, about. Well, part of it, like I almost was like masculinity. And I was like, no, that is not the topic that we decide going. Well, we're going to talk about masculinity. We are going to talk about masculinity femininity. and femininity. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So <clears throat> When God created man and woman, um, Genesis 127, um, it talks about, and of course I've just lost it now, but anyway, when God created Adam, um, (laughs) thank you. So 127, so God created man in his image and in the, um, and then after he created Adam, he caused Adam to fall into a sleep. And then he took Eve from a rib from Adam's side. And so then he created them male and female. And so what's interesting is when God created man and woman, the first organization was born, which is marriage. And what has been kind of stirring as we've been going through these videos is this beautiful partnership, but there's a, something very special that our society is working overtime to erode and that is the masculinity of men and also this femininity that is healthy but what we can dive more into that um chris has a really great book that we've both been kind of reading here and there but he's actually read it and he's done the (laughs) okay okay because it's you i'll be honest i'll be honest because this is about this is exactly what's about to get said (laughs) she's read the first chapter maybe two maybe two and the back of the book so like let's give me a little (laughs) it's super good the first (laughs) there is a trend of books that my lovely wife buys and i think she's only read chapter one or two of each of them She's like, oh, I got the general gist and, and we're good. We're not going to unpackage this tonight because this is not the best use of our time or their time. So okay. I'm going to save you from that. Bottom line is. But if it, you write a book, write a solid good first chapter because that's about all I have capacity to take in sometimes. Okay. Men and women are uniquely designed. And despite the all out assault on the... the biological differences of men and women each one of us are uniquely designed i have a very specific role as the head of the home and danielle has a very specific role as the (laughs) helpmate and my teammate and we we do this together me being the head of the home doesn't mean i'm lording over her and um directing what she does no we we are walking in this marriage and this this life together. Yeah, partnership. Uh, this is a, yeah, this is a partnership. She's my teammate and we do everything together from prayer to um, just how we navigate life choices for us and um, decisions with our children. But we both bring a very different perspective because of how we are uniquely wired. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just really beautiful. So in Wild at Heart, Uh, John Eldridge, who is the author, he actually talks about how men need three things. One, they need a battle to fight. Two, they need an adventure. And three, they need a beauty to rescue. And what's so interesting is as John Eldridge has connected with thousands of men and done all these studies that inside every little boy are some of these innate desires. And yes, they may manifest in various ways, but even in our sons, our four-year-old, at least we're already seeing this. Mm. And it is so interesting how, um, as we have like gone through and like looked at various quotes throughout the book, and we've even had some of these conversations where chipping away or sabotaging, as he talks about in one of the chapter, when you start to sabotage how God has maybe 
innately wired you, how it starts to erode you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about that and you have your husband, like that is eroding from the inside out, then he's not showing up as the best version of himself. And now we have a culture of society where we have men who don't know who they are, where their footing is, or we have men who maybe feel like they're going to be rejected or even punished if they're actually like, well, what if I am a passionate person? What if I am an, like, not in a negative way, but a aggressive type personality, because that's how I'm wired and designed. And, and there are just as with any characteristics, right? There are strengths and there are weaknesses. <laughs> there are things that you could improve, like take any characteristic, um, but we've punished men. And so with that, I even see women sometimes as, as wives or even in dating relationships that the disrespect is so rampant and this, this need to not only compete, but just to belittle and just to, to disrespect of like, you're not going to do this. And, and, and that is not a healthy teamwork. And so as I was just praying through this, what I really began to see was um, men and women running on a track. And what happens in a track is that the lanes always go side by side, but they never cross. And I see a lot of women wanting to step into the man's lane and men being so confused and punished with their lane. They're trying to step into the women's lanes. And if God created man and woman in his image, there are different components of that that are so desperately needed. Yeah, absolutely. Colossians 3, 14, in the Passion Translation says, let every wife be supported and tenderly devoted to her husband. For this is a beautiful illustration of our devotion to Christ. And it follows up with, let every husband be filled with cherishing love for his wife and never be insensitive toward her. So we, we both have our lanes, but we both have our ways of dealing with those lanes too. And mm -hmm. there, there is going to be a time that, uh, that I lean on her for, for her advice in certain areas that I may not be as strong in. And the same thing applies to her uh, when she leans on me for areas that she may not be as strong in. Yeah. And so um, it's super important to come together uh, in your daily encounters and come together with each other when you're discussing these things and really lay out expectations. Because I think that's one of the things early on in our marriage that we discovered very quickly. If we can manage each other's expectations, life is really good. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the few times that we do have uh, intense conflict, as we like to call it, um, those are times that really come back to expectation management. We both felt something different was going to happen. We have to discuss it and yeah. come back to the drawing table. Yeah, for sure. And I think too, of even being a safe place for your, your spouse yeah. of what are you feeling? What are you seeing? And how are you, because I will tell you right now, the way that like, a situation could happen X, Y, and Z, and the way that Chris hears it, receives it, perceives it, and wants to respond to it could be a night and day difference from me. That's not bad. That just sometimes is room for us to unpackage a little bit differently together to come together. But what's so beautiful is we were made in God's image. Both parties are needed. And so when we come together in unity and when we come together in healthy dialogue, when we come together to embrace the way that God has naturally designed and wired me, the way that God has naturally designed and wired Chris, there is a completeness that we can just seek the father, ask for his heart, that we can approach any situation far better together. And so even as Chris had mentioned, I think in um, a video, like I think it was video 17 or 18, but a, a, a three braided cord cannot easily be broken. And that's exactly what it is. <clears throat> so um, just this is, you know, just a big takeaway, like as I keep coming back to this, is this encouragement of the enemy is the deceiver. That is his nature, is deception. Something that looks attractive, that is close to the truth, but it is not. And so it's if, a counterfeit. it is, it is, yes, it is totally a counterfeit. And a counterfeit does not build anything. 
it doesn't build wealth it won't build anything that's lasting it won't it's it's you know it is it's exactly that and so as you are continuing to grow hopefully in your relationship with the lord as you're continuing to build a marriage it's just one of the things that i just keep coming back to of how can we just embrace but also be a safe place for men to return to this unapologetic stance of masculinity rooted in the word of God and submitted to the authority of God. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we've seen, and and I I think it's become more magnified as we're raising our own children now, how our roles, uh, they are going to pick up on that. Our Mm -hmm. kids are going to pick up on our roles and they're going to pick up on what we're good at and what we're not good at. And so we are the first example that they see of what masculinity is of what femininity is yeah so that's why it's so important one reason it's so important for us because then that sets the course for the next generation of what they're going to do and so what we've seen over the last hundred years is a slow degradation of celebrating those unique gender differences yeah what we've seen amplified and expedited since maybe 2008 to 2016 and beyond is even more degradation of that where there's more gender confusion than there's ever been before, Mm -hmm. where we celebrate pronouns over prophecy, where we celebrate gender confusion over clearly defined biological design, where we celebrate falsity over truth, prejudice and hypocrisy, and inequity over righteousness and justice. This is something that we as men, we as women have to be completely solidly rooted in our biblical design in the way God created us to be. Yeah. Because our kids are watching. The next generation is watching. And if they're not clear on what that looks like because they don't have a good example in front of them, no wonder they're confused, right? They're searching for answers. They're seeking something. They're looking for more. They have no idea. So when we see some of these problems in our society, Mm -hmm. it starts right here at home. It starts right here on the way that I talk to my wife. It starts right here in the way that she talks to me in the way that she uh, walks with me and celebrates me and supports me and respects me in the way that I tenderly love and care for her. And if that's not happening, your kids are gonna notice that. Our kids are gonna notice that. So the times that I'm not exactly walking the way I should be because I've had a rough day, I've gotta step back and, and come humbly and say, hey guys, I could have handled that differently. I'm sorry I was short. I'm sorry, uh, I got frustrated. And it's okay to do that too, because then they also understand that yeah. we all make mistakes. And yeah. just because we're mom and dad doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. But the sooner you talk to them about that, the more that they're going to understand and the more that they're going to respect the design that God has wired us all to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and on that note, you know, as we are walking, this is true with anything, as you're walking out, who you are, the season that you're in the, you know, like with your husband or even, you know, the journey that you're on, it doesn't mean that like, as soon as you're like, okay, I'm going to, you know, respect my husband. I'm going to be a little bit more intentional about, you know, just honoring the masculinity, or I'm going to make sure that my femininity is submitted to the word of God, not adhering to what the culture says that like femininity should look like today. Um, But as you're navigating that, know that the enemy is out to steal, kill and destroy as John 10, 10 tells. So just be on alert, be of sober mind as the word tells us and be on alert because scripture also tells us that the, the devil prowls around like a lion seeking to destroy. And so as you continue to take steps towards a marriage that you love as you continue to take steps towards building up your spouse as you continue to take steps to submit yourself to the lord and your relationship the attacks are going to come but know that there is a covering that the lord's going to give and his word never returns void he is a stronghold your stronghold he's your safe place he is your covering and god can handle all of it so as long as you're walking with the lord pursuing him having your daily encounters and continuing to come back to okay god i may not understand how my spouse is wired 
you have resources. You can seek the, the word of God. You can dive into the book Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. You can take, stay, take steps for that, but don't let an excuse and don't let culture be what rules and reigns over this. Seek to protect this because ladies, we need godly men. We need them to rise as the warriors they are, the warriors that they were created to be. And they need to know that they have a safe place to fight, to lead, to find adventures in. And in that of us helping celebrate that, cultivate that and protect that, they are then going to in turn show up in ways that we actually really desire that maybe we don't even know how to articulate anymore. Yeah. John Eldridge put it this way in his book, for after years of living in a cage, a lion no longer even believes he, he is a lion and a man no longer believes he is a man. Oh, gives me goosebumps. Oh. Yeah. So if we're not, if we're not so living sad. the way that God has designed us to be, we will continue, we will continue to lose that. Yeah. And if your teammate is not celebrating that, if you're not celebrating her, we're going to continue to degrade in the way that God has wired us to be. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can't tell you how, um, how great it is to have a relationship like this because I've had it the other way as well. And I've had it the other way where you can't help but feel emasculated. And I have never felt that in a, in a godly marriage that is centered on Christ and that is centered on him. And so if you're, if you're struggling with this in your own marriage and you're struggling with just um, a sense of mutual respect, then I, I, I recommend you, you come together and you talk about it. I recommend you come together and you just kind of talk through expectations. Hey, what do you think is really my role? You know, what, is, what is your role? And you're able to then kind of start at ground zero and really start fresh. I think there's some times throughout the week that we got to start fresh just for the day, just for the week because yeah. of a variety of reasons. And that's yeah. okay. His mercies are new every morning. Yeah. So, well, and we also did a few videos back, even that video of proactive measures. And this mm -hmm. is to his point, a really great, a really great thing is if this is an area that you're like, whew, that, that, that tool or that tip is something that I think we could do better on. Great. Like, pause on the videos for now, and then take steps to do that. Like what is the best yes for you guys in the season that you're at? Is it having a conversation? Is it reading a book together? Mm -hmm. Is it actually scheduling that counseling appointment? Like we can't answer what that is for you. And the important thing is that you take a step towards health and healing and information and just continuing to learn together because that is investing in your marriage. That is a win to building a marriage that you love ultimately. Absolutely. Um, anything else to add? I got. I could go on about this topic, but oh, I, I could too. I I know this is something <laughs> we could probably unpackage even more. But, yeah. Um, we 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 may have to do a few extra videos. Yeah. Just, Maybe we'll do a whole course on it. Not that we're the experts, because we are both very passionate about it. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's one more thing I, I just wanted to add here and the words that women use can either wound or build up mm. and you know we talked about in previous videos the five love languages and um <laughs> how important it is it's so hard for you to say it huh? is uh, yeah i still struggle with the five love languages yeah it's a tongue twister Saying it's quickly, good just try it yeah. five times in a row it's good. why don't you try it no quick? Okay. How important it is to use words to build up. <laughs> so, uh, how important it is to build each other up um, with words and, and genuine words, right? Yeah. Um, wounds can deeply, or words can deeply wound um, men. And I celebrate Danielle because that's never been her. She has never um, wounded me with the things that she said. And um, it's so important to make sure, uh, men, that we're doing the same thing and encouraging and uplifting and celebrating uh, the wins and celebrating 
your spouse too. But like I said, that's a mutual thing. And uh, just because we are men and supposed to be masculine doesn't mean that um, words can't wound. And uh, it's important to have that mutual respect to really talk through those kind of things and, and make sure that you celebrate each other. Yeah, that's so, good. That's all I have for this one, Dr. K. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us for tool number 22. And we can't wait to talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.